Hello and welcome to Popcorn Digest. And for our latest episode, we're reviewing James Cameron's surprisingly pro-global warming movie that makes Glacial Ice the villain. <laughs> That's right, we're plunging deep into Titanic, a horror film about a 104-year-old forcing a group of strangers to read her erotic fanfiction. Get a twist and it didn't happen. She is the crazy old woman that they thought she was. <laughs> yeah, I've got another one about vampires and werewolves. That's the sequel. <laughs> DiCaprio and Winslet play Jack and Rose, the star-crossed lovers whose affection for each other transcends barriers of class and money. Oh, that was better. You gotta work on it. Not only do these lovers have to overcome the small matter of a sinking ship, but they are required to somehow survive sharing the frame with best supporting actor Billy Zane's wig. <laughs> yeah. Look at me, you filth! For me, personally, I'm gonna say straight from the off that Titanic represents peak James Cameron. And that is mostly, almost for me, like overwhelmingly for better, but also for worse as well, because it has, it's the perfect culmination of everything he does right and the things he does wrong as yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the king of the world! <laughs> it's the encapsulation of him as a storyteller and as a showman. He says in the documentary that he always wanted to be a populist director. Yeah. And this is something that always gives me a red flag when I hear directors say this. But he made movies for the fans. <laughs> I make the movies for the audience. It's like the moment that like a superhero movie comes out and does terribly. Like Morbius comes out and Jared Leto's like, well, this film's not for the critics. <laughs> it's for the fans of Morbius. <laughs> They're over there around that table. It's Morbin time. Oh, God, can we get Morbius on a Titanic, please? <laughs> Actually, Jared Leto was was one of the people that was uh, in the lineup for uh, Jack, wasn't he? He was. Um, yeah. He was one of the people that was being considered. I am. So rather interesting. A, a lot. A lot of people turned this film down. It wasn't one of those films that people were like scrambling to uh, get cast in. Do you think it was just like the idea that? Well, this sounds like it's going to be an absolute fucking ball ache, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Titanic. Oh, that sounds interesting. Wait, actually, that sounds like about six months of night shoots submerged in water with the shouty man <laughs> with a very shouty man <laughs> yeah. wait are you talking about DiCaprio or James Cameron there because we have two very shouty men yeah I do, I buy into the romance. I'm you know I'm a romantic at heart, Andy. <laughs> but yeah, I do like the romance. I particularly love Kate Winslet in this film and we'll go into the we'll go into Kate Winslet in a bit. <laughs> Rose is by far the more well rounded character. She is one who has something internal to overcome as well. She has her own preconceived notions of class and of money and that type of thing. Wait, I don't have to leave. This is my part of the ship. You leave. Oh, well, well, well. Now who's being rude? It would be interesting more if Jack had some preconceived notions about her as well that he has to overcome. Like, yeah. that he comes to, to realise it'd be nice if they kind of met, meet in the middle and find each other there. Like we were saying that this is peak Cameron, both the best and the worst, James Cameron has always written his female characters very well. I said no! <laughs> some of his male characters less so. Mm -hmm. And this is like indicative of that i would say Whoa! i can see the statue of liberty already that is small of course <laughs> and the one glaring omission which makes me laugh every single fucking time i see him on screen fabrizio? is fabrizio because jesus you, i was gonna say Christ. exact same yeah. same one yeah mamma mia spaghetti bolognese <laughs> Oh, it's, it's a me, a it's a me, a me. me. It's a me. I got to America. <laughs> He's like one of the fucking Dolmio puppets. Fettuccini. <laughs> like you could do a version of this film where you just completely replace him with a, a Dolmio puppet. So oh, God. Do you bet and the, the thing that makes me laugh is that James Cameron thought he was like Italian, like proper Italian, and was convinced by his performance. <laughs> And I was like, <laughs> you've not been to Italy any time recently, have you? That's like being uh, convinced that Mickey Rooney <laughs> is a genuinely Japanese genuinely by his performance Japanese. in Breakfast at Tiffany's. Oh, well, I just, I just thought he was. I thought he was one of them. 
Yeah, I thought Sean Connery had turned Japanese in the middle of the end of the I, I thought Sean Connery was pretending to be white. <laughs> uh, he is like a cardboard cutout Italian. Yeah, he's, for he's, the time. <laughs> like it's not. It's, it's it's less than that. He's like the Titanic's Jar Jar Binks in a way. It's like we're still going home. <laughs> oh my god, that is a great. I'm a cook in the chicken parmesan. <laughs> It is strange going back to this film after all this time because, yeah, it's always, always for me, been one of those films that's, that's out there, but I've never really had any kind of great urge to go back to and, and look. And it's strange because I do enjoy it when it's on and I'd love it a lot more were it not for certain things in the film. There's about a five to ten minute section in the film. It's during the middle of the sinking when it's just focusing on the string players and the crew and I think that's where the captain decides to go into the bridge and everything like that. Yes, yeah. It's like my favourite part of the film. And it's it's the part of the film that doesn't really feature Jack or Rose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it shows you my feelings towards the film. Which, to be fair, is, is clearly something that people have drew criticism with. But it's not something that's particularly ever really bothered myself. I, I like James Cameron in terms of his filmmaking and writing flaws and all, even in regards to his very cheesy um, character archetypes that he likes to use and uh, his cheesy dialogue, I am there 100% for that. And this is certainly James Cameron at his peak when it comes to cheesy dialogue and uh, cheesy character interactions. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Where to, miss? To the stars. Yeah, that is an excellent sequence and to be honest i wrote in my notes on this watch that one of my favorite parts of the film is that during the sinking there is a moment of quietness where jack is in handcuffs in the room and rose is forced to leave the room to go find a way to help him escape and we have this five minute sequence of her just wandering the flooding corridors on her own yeah yeah as the titanic creaks and groans around her the lights flicker the thing that we can hear most is the water rushing and her breath. There are no words said, it's just this moment where we get to appreciate what's happening before it does. Mm. And it feels like like Titanic is a living, breathing, like it's almost like being in the belly of the whale. Yeah, yeah. It's just this moment of pure dread. And that is probably my favourite moment. And then she returns back to Jack and that storyline continues. But it's just this moment where he lets us appreciate the enormity of what's happening before it really kicks off into the next gear uh, because from that point onwards it doesn't stop yeah yeah if you just look at the logistics of this farm and what they had to do and build like you know the fact that they built the titanic full scale he said it was built full scale. They did take a few sections out to make it a couple of, like, I think it's about 30 feet shorter than the actual I was going to say, yeah, 30 it's feet still actually, shorter. It's, it's, not, it's not like, uh, I think you said, people think mistakenly think it's 90% scale. Now it's full scale. We just took some sections out to make it a bit shorter, and we hope you don't know yeah. this sort of thing. But the whole thing was built, like, twice, because they had to film it once completely flat, and then the, uh, the second time they built it was when it was built at a six-degree angle. So they could kind of have it slightly angled and then the rest of it was all down to like Dutch angles. Which is crazy to think that like something as simple as Dutch angles being toyed with through CGI. Yeah. It is genuinely seamless. There's some really funny stuff as well. Like obviously they had they built that end the end of the poop deck, which goes like almost like 90 degrees vertical. Yes. But in terms of the shots where you see people falling down the ship further when they're skidding down the whole length of the ship. Yes, yeah. That's just filmed on the flat version of the ship with them on little skateboards being pulled by cables. Uh, yeah. And when you watch it, it's like, oh yeah, it is. They're totally on a skateboard. But because they've done it in such a way and it's, it's all Dutch angles and it's all cutting really well, you kind of don't notice anything. I hope they're okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. And there are even shots as well within the ship itself. The shot of Andrew stood at the clock and you can see all the drink in his glasses at like certain um, angles and that type of thing. And he's he's leant forward. And I thought that they had shot that on a tilting set. Yeah. And it's just a Dutch angle and they've got the glasses on strings. <laughs> and the liquid that's inside the glasses is actually a gel that is set at a certain angle. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, of course it is. That's so simple. Yeah. And yet I'd never, ever doubted it. There are all these like little tricks throughout this film that are so simple, really. Yeah. 
it's almost like the prestige because they're so simple you start like making them grander than what they are because they get the basics right the fundamentals of filmmaking of big budget filmmaking because they get them right it's something that i can imagine like with a marvel film for example it's like oh yeah we'll we'll do it all with cg yeah. <laughs> it'll probably end up costing a ton more for like a shot like that there's that shot one in the it's one of the restaurant scenes where it's like he promised them that he wouldn't build a full-scale set for this particular scene because i think it's only used once but because they had to like build the model of it green screen it and then composite it he said it probably costed about the same amount of money <laughs> <laughs> to do Fuck me! Thank you for listening to the latest episode of the show. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And remember you can catch the full-length podcasts both on our YouTube page and on any podcast hosting platform such as Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. See you soon. It's the Popcorn Digest with Gareth and-